a little bit of a, a, a situation that unfolded last night. And some of you guys were privy to this. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun. But, uh, you know, last night I was watching uh, Davy Crocco's stream with Wild Smile. By the way, two guys that uh, I'm, I'm very big fans of. Uh, not only, um, but, um, we were having a little fun last night at the expense of, uh, Jeremy, the quartering and, uh, everybody was getting in on this action. I mean, it was, it started with me fucking with them and Davey Crocco was fucking with them and Andy Worski jumped in and me and Worski were going hard on him. I think the hardest Ethan Ralph jumped in. Like it just became this fucking pile on of people fucking with the quartering. And honestly, I it's 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 my fault. I started it. So it's definitely my fault, but like I didn't even mean to start whatever the fuck I started, right? I literally tweeted out one thing last night. I'm just trying to find it now. Uh here it is. This was my tweet last night. This tweet Okay, for some reason, started World War Three on Twitter. <laughs> so, um, I was as I was saying, I was watching Davy Crocco and Wild Smile, two guys. I, I'm fans of their work. I'm also fans of them as people. Uh, very cool guys. So you know, I like to support people and uh, support our friends. So got done with the show last night, and then you know, Davy Crocco's live. So you know, I tweeted it out, and I'm like, yeah, I'll go pop in. I'll you know, I'll throw him a stream labs. I'll, I'll watch a little bit before I go play video games. And he's playing this clip of uh, the quartering. And I'm like, he's not really wearing this hat, right? So if you, for those of you that can see, he's wearing a hat in his video about, this was about Tim Pool, where his hat said, uh, meme war veteran. <laughs> Which, this is like, this was the cringiest thing I've seen in a fucking long time. So I couldn't, I couldn't resist, and I tagged him in this tweet, and I, it, all I wrote was, bro, sweet hat. <laughs> like that's, that's all I felt like saying. Just not even going really hard on the guy, not being that much of a dick. Just, hey, bro, sweet hat. Because <laughs> it's just, just let the thing fucking speak for itself, right? Um. <laughs> he's a beta so I, I couldn't let this in this shit made me laugh so uh, Andy Worski jumped in saying my soul cringes and then the quartering got really pissed off at that and uh, decided to start yelling at Worski a lot of you guys ended up getting retweets from him though so that's um, so that's kind of funny but uh so Andy Worski wrote, my soul cringes, the quartering fired back. Getting roasted by Andy Worski has never meant less. I wish you the best, dude. Hopefully you get your life back on track. Oh, the old taking the high road tax. Gotta love that. Taking the old high road. Oh, gee. I wish you the best. I hope you get your life back on track, man. So we all started busting his chops. Worski said his wife should divorce him for that ad, which that made me laugh. Uh, and, dude, he just started retweet, subtweeting and replying to every individual insult directed at him uh, for the better part of the evening last night. I mean, it was just nonstop. And like I said, I piled on. Ethan Ralph piled on. Worski. Uh, uh, SoCal Chris. A.G. Luck, Travis, I mean, just everybody was piling on this idiot and making fun of his cat. And then, of course, the quartering says, oh, yeah, right, his wife should divorce him. Uh, his wife of 12 years should divorce him for wearing a hat their mutual friend bought him for Christmas. So, of course, I had to say to him that uh, if my own mother came back from the dead and gave me that hat as a gift, uh, I would have to throw it in the garbage immediately. Uh, that I would rather wear a hat that says registered sex offender on it. Um, so I don't, does this guy, does, I don't really watch the quartering. Like I, I, I talk to him a little bit when, um, 
you, you know, when the fucking uh, Magic the Gathering shit was going on with the pedophiles. And I thought he did good work there, I, objectively. I'm not going to pretend retroactively uh, like I didn't think he did great work on that. Uh, we covered that a little bit on our show when he started doing his thing. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was good work outing people. I thought his motivation was pretty obvious. Um you know, the only, the only problem I had with his stuff, uh, with the Magic the Gathering stuff, it's like, you know, if you knew all this stuff was going on, uh, why did you wait until they kicked you out before you went and ran to the press? Um, it's it, That's one of those things where, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so you knew that there were all these pedos and they were, like, conducting all these fucking tournaments or whatever with these kids, and you didn't care until they kicked you out of the Magic the Gathering tournaments and they kept your money. And then you were like, hey guys, there's pedophiles in there. So that was like my only issue with that, but objectively it's pretty gross that these people were, were employing these disgusting folks. So, uh, you know, we gave that some coverage, whatever, but does he have any self-awareness at all? Like, I, I don't, I haven't watched him since then, but uh, it just seems like he just sucks Tim Pool's dick now and wears cringy hats, but like, what is his, uh, what is his problem? Bad News says he hired PewDiePie's video editor to try to get more views. Um, it's been fading from relevance since the Monday Matt shitstorm. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, though, that's why you really shouldn't rely on uh, e-drama. You know, it, it, these these guys, um, now it's not just the quartering, it's a lot of these, the blood sports types of people. Um they rely way too much on the drama itself to keep people interested in their show. And in my opinion, you should be focused on being funny, being engaging, having quality content, building a good community. Like this, you should be focused on the content. And then when you get a moment of drama, capitalize on it, get more eyes on your show. But you got to, you know, when the people just constantly do the drama thing, it, it, it kind of wears thin after a while. Uh, he's he's debating apparently uh, Tim Pool's brother right now on the kill stream. I don't care. Look, we're going to have uh, Tim Pool's brother on uh, Revenge of the Sis, uh, I believe, this week coming up. He's going to come on and, and tell his side of the story. So, um, you know, looking forward to hearing that. I'll be honest with you. I think both of the Pool brothers are fucking cringe. If I'm being honest, um, that's just how I feel. It, but if this guy has some dirt on Tim Pool, I'm all about it, right? Like, I, I don't, if I have to pick a side, I'm picking the non Tim Pool side um, because he's a food, buck, food bucket shilling uh, uh, shill, basically. And uh, so we're going to have him on next week. Should be um, interesting, and we'll see what he has to say regarding this. Uh, subverse which by the way you guys are like the, i think the cringiest thing about the pool brothers fighting each other is the fact that you guys are fighting over a dot net domain <laughs> you know what i mean like holy shit it's not even a dot com ah so i gotta i gotta loosen up my belt a little bit i'm getting fat um they're fighting over a dot net domain which is really fucking cringe to me um, but whatever they're, they're having their little battle and, uh, you know, look, anything that exposes Tim pool, I'm fucking game for. So hopefully we'll, uh, get him on next week and he'll have, uh, whatever he has to say, but that, I just want to update you. We had Jeremy, uh, kind of freaking the fuck out. 